is that are made to a world standard. So if you go into uh, an instructor for lessons, and you say, yeah, I bought this violin at Walmart and uh, I paid a hundred bucks for it. I said, can you teach me? And the guy will say, no, he's just, he's, no. It was go buy a proper student violin and then I'll teach you. Because to teach somebody on a, you know, and it's not just the violin, there's the bow. We're gonna talk about how bow pricing is a scam too. I don't know if I'll get it done in this round of videos, but uh, it is something that it, it follows kind of a similar suit, but even more, it's even more subjective with the bows. Um, so yeah, the BL100 type, uh, you know, the 100 series type violins, whether it's, uh, you know, like a Steinbach, if I said it right, or a Yamaha or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the brand. They're, they're built to a standard that, yes, this thing will be set up for you. The bridge will stay in place. The tuners will hold tuning. The fingerboard will be the same length from one violin to the next with, you know, fair, fair consistency. Uh, the sound post will stay in place. Uh, you know, for the most part, these are playable instruments. They might not be as flashy. They're going to be a little bit simpler. Uh, they're usually come out almost bright orange, <laughs> you know, like a, just the way they're varnished. Uh, very plain woods, but it's a carved top, not a piece of plywood on there. Uh, and it's a real fingerboard on there, not a, uh, you know, a, you know, compressed sawdust fingerboard. So it is an instrument that is playable and you can play for years and years and years. You can perform with it, you can do with this, you can do with that. And like I say, you're not gonna be breaking the bank to the point where, you know, you have to mortgage, take a second mortgage on your house to do it, right? Or five, five part-time jobs to pay for it. Uh, and a lot of people, they'll get a violin like that and that's all the violin they'll ever need. You know, it's like, uh, and I've played enough of the, uh, comparing the student violins to the, you know, maestro, maestro, maestro violins. So the student violins is the one that's built to uniform, uh, you know, from manufacturer to manufacturer, it's almost guaranteed uh, good student results. Uh, almost any, um, you know, uh, uh, violin teacher will probably teach you on it. And if you don't know which one to buy, I, to me, it just doesn't really matter. Go with the one that gives you the best deal because they're all going to be close enough. Maybe one looks prettier than the other. You like the color of one a little more than the other, whatever, whatever. But just for learning, it's not going to matter that much as long as the instrument is a solid, reliable instrument. And if you don't know which ones to go, go to a violin instructor and they'll probably have about five of them there for you to try out from different brands. Say, well, this one I recommend because of this, this one tends to do a little bit better here, whatever, little finicky things. And violins are all about finickiness uh, of uh, subjectivity, right? So then after that, you say, well, okay, I've been playing for a little while, but I wanna go a little more intermediate, which is the next category. So maybe it's basically a student violin with a with some nice hardware on it. And nicer, maybe a nicer wood, maybe have a nicer finish on the back, uh, on the you know, maybe something maybe not quite as lovely as that. Again, the camera won't pick up the detail of this. This thing is just gorgeous, especially when you go outside and the sun hits it. It's just like it's like golden honey. It's it's beautiful. Um so then you start getting into, you know, like okay, a little more cosmetics, uh, maybe better hardware, whatever. Uh, some people will take their student violin and they will uh, tend to, uh, you know, put better hardware on it, but they don't quite get what the intermediate violin gives them. One thing about a student violin is things that I've heard is that the tops are usually a little bit thicker for durability because, you know, picture your teenage student getting on the school bus, banging the, <laughs> banging the case against the, the door as he comes in and drops on it, trips over it, you know, 18 times, you know, it's, a, you know, like sitting in the laundry basket falls over. So they are, the, the student violins tend to be built a little bit more rigid. So that stuffs them up a bit. And you will hear the difference once you start going into a higher category of violin, where it's like, oh, the top breathes a bit better. So on the intermediate, the intermediate's a very challenging one uh, because now you're going like from probably about five, 600 bucks up to maybe about 2000, right? So what makes this violin 
$600 and this violin 2000, right? That's where the subjectivity comes in. And when you take a $2,000 violin and put it up against a $650 violin, uh, you know, is it guaranteed that the $2,000 violin is going to be better? No, no. And this I discovered, this is what revealed the scam to me. So it was a VL200, I believe, roughly about this kind of a red. It was a nice violin. I was in a, a shop called The Sound Post in Ottawa. Nice little shop. I haven't been in there in years. But I bought all kinds of stuff from them. Uh, you know, like I bought the bridge pieces and hardware and stuff. Like Between them and the, there was another one uh, where the guy, the old guy, the Czechoslovakian guy, well, Czech Republic now, I guess, uh, I bought this violin from this violin from this violin from this one because he had all these cool violins sitting in the basement. And I just wanted to fix them up and maybe sell them or whatever, but I ended up falling in love with them, right? Because of character. But I, I, I was trying a VL100, then I tried, it was uh, Hagen Wise, uh, and it was like 2,200 or something like that. And obviously it sounded better, played better. It's like, oh, okay, wow. And then I grabbed this other violin that was like 13, 1400 bucks. And I can't remember what brand it was. Uh, Harlan Loren. Was it Harlan Loren? Whatever it was. Anyway, I was like, I think that one sounds better, right? And it played a little bit better. Uh, but each one played a little different. And then there was one around 2700 bucks. It was very similar in color to this. A little bit a paler color. Uh, it, was, it was really fancy. And I think that was probably the second best playing and sounding violin that I tried out of these 28 violins. And then I tried another one that was 1600. Again, it, it just sounded, but mind you, that the, the $2,700 one had the obligados on it. And I don't know if I like the strings more or the violin more, but it was a phenomenal violin. And they were gonna get rid of it uh, uh, as a discontinued violin for uh, a long McQuaid for like 2,500. And then down to 2250. So I kept going in kind of like every couple of weeks saying, well, would you, you know, well, if you buy it within the next three weeks, we'll bring it down there. But it eventually sold. It eventually sold. And I never bought it. At the time, you know, I couldn't really afford it. Uh, but I did have a good, you know, I, I, I could have, it was a little outside my price range, but it was within reason of a, the top end of my price range. I would have just had to dig a little bit more to get it. I would have been able to get it. But then I'm in the, the sound post and um, there was a bunch of people in there and this lady walks in and she walks in with this used violin that she was going to buy and the guy was asking 3200 for it. I, I just kind of, you know, like the, the shop was smaller than in here, right? Kind of over her, her, right? It wasn't eavesdropping. But I was like, just look while I was checking something else. And she says, well, before I plunge that money down, she goes, I haven't played in a long time and I'm taking lessons again. And I don't want, you know, like I've had a student violin forever. I want something really good, but 3,200 bucks, right? So she's there. I'm going to try this one at 2,000. I'll try this one at 3,600. And the one at 3,600 sounded a little better than the one at 3,200, but she's like, ah, eh, spacing's a little bit weird on this one. But that's subjective again, because... I can guarantee you, I can hand this to any violinist in the world and they will go, what the hell is this thing? Okay, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, I can hand them this one, they'll go, oh, cool. I'll hand them this one, they'll say, really? For that price, it does that, right? I'll hand them this one, like, give me my earplugs. Holy crap, this thing's loud. <laughs> brilliant. It is a brilliant violin. Uh, if I ever put avocados on that, I'm taking the windows out of the place. It's, it's just got to... Oh yeah, this thing hits you in the face, man. That's a concert violin and a half. Uh, but anyway, um, so she's playing, and uh, the luthier's there, and he, you know, he grabs it, he, he tunes them up for, her, you know, so she's not there trying to tune, you know, whatever. And he does that, you know, C scale, right? They they all do it. Like every violin shop, you got every, that's just, that's the the standard test. To make sure the things in tune, right? And he goes, uh, well, yeah, I'll just grab this one just so you can compare. So she paired, compared those three and he grabs a, a random VL200 that's like 650 bucks. Again, almost as red as this. He grabs, uh, ding, 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 ding. okay, it's a two. Ding, 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 ding. But five people in the shop, including myself, turn and go like, is it, is it just me or does that thing sound really good? And he's all, the luthier, so he's, 
Be a tutor? <laughs> and it's like, it was the sweetest sounding violin I'd ever heard. I was like, still to this day, I can hear the thing in my head going, I've still not heard that yet on another violin. Like that was like 650 bucks, right? So I'm like, if she doesn't take that, of course I went back the next day, yeah, she took it. She bought that over the $3,600 violin, the $3,200 violin, the $2,000 violin. <laughs> you see where I'm getting at here? Uh, and it played within reason of these other violins. Like again, three weeks of playing it, you probably wouldn't be able to, wouldn't make a difference. You, you know, 650 bucks, right? So, and I mean, like, I cannot, like, it was really noticeable how sweet this violin sounded. And if you know what I mean by a sweet sounding violin, like this thing was just like sugar on honey. Like it was smooth, balanced, the E, the G was, it was just to die for, right? And I'm like, I pray she doesn't buy it. Pray she doesn't buy it, but she bought it. <laughs> she bought it. And I mean, 650 bucks, and I was willing to spend a lot more. But at the time, knowing what I know now, I don't know if I would, uh, unless, uh, you know, we get to the third category here. So intermediate, a little, a little more flashier and a little bit better hardware than your, uh, maybe a little bit more refinement. And then you go from okay, violin shaped object to your uh, learn, uh, student violins to your intermediate. Now your intermediate, like I said, I've seen what they call an intermediate violin in between that. And after that, you've got your pro violin. Right, so for, say two thousand dollars to like eight thousand dollars. That's a pro violin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what 